Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening and welcome to part 11 of Back to Eden versus Fall Leaves. And as you can see here, we have lots of green from our five different types of seeds that we planted a little less than three weeks ago and they're doing extremely well. Uh, good germination. We did finally get some rain, not much, about a half inch, and it's still getting dry again, so we might have to water to keep this alive. But these are the cover crops that I planted into the raised beds leveled with the wood chips. So the soil that's in the cover crop area is at least 10 inches high above the original soil level, and so is the wood chips. And also we're going to be planting up some more native grasses. I have a tray of 20 units in front of you and we'll be planting them up towards the back. I uh, did about another say 150 feet and moved the soil into a raised bed area way towards the back now. And that's all ready to accept the uh, perennial grasses and also the five different types of seeds. And as you can see here, the three different types of legumes plus the uh, perennial grass which is that purple grass towards your back uh, upper left hand corner is doing very nicely in the last three weeks and the clover is growing and the winter rye and annual rye grass and alfalfa and crimson clover and red mammoth clover they're doing all extremely well. So the reason why I have this row, or several rows, or three rows I'm going to have, uh, 300 feet long, in growing this way in the future in the Back to Eden Garden, because I want to accept the mycorrhizal fungi as quick as possible to my plants that I'll be planting right directly into this green row. And I'll be planting it in towards the front, not towards the back, in the front, towards uh, closest to the uh, sun in the morning. So the reason why I chose to do this method is because I do not have any other uh, perennial roots in the ground. When I started just laying the wood chips on the ground, I had nothing else living in the soil. And soil cannot be built without a living root in the ground. A permanent living root in the ground will be more helpful uh, throughout the year, but I didn't have even that. So the reason why I'm planting up these three rows, uh, 300 feet long, is that when I plant my plants into it, my vegetable plants into it next year, I can benefit from the mycorrhizal fungi automatically. It's like connecting in or plugging into um, a system that's already there already. So I, if you want to, think about your plant is almost like, um, I'll give you an example. So think of it this way, when you come into your garden next spring, by doing this, you can plug into the mycorrhizal fungi already because it's growing and it's in the ground. If you do not have a living root in the ground or a perennial root, you cannot plug into it. Now, there's two different types. The most common type of fungus out there is your endo, which is that plug, and there's ecto, which is this plug. Now, endo is the most common one you see all the time. So now you're gonna plug that into the soil. Think of the mycorrhizal as uh, electricity. You don't see it, but you know it's there when you plug things in and things work. Just like mycorrhizal fungi or other things in the ground, it's there living. You not, might not see it, but it's there. So remember, all the seeds that I planted is a living root, it's a perennial root. It's going to be there forever unless you terminate it somehow or destroy it or do something with it. So think of it as an electrical outlet. Now you have this electrical outlet that is the mycorrhizal fungi ready to be there when you plant your plant. Now you have an outlet for your plant. So just like electricity, you have to make a connection. You have to plug that in. And those roots have to be close enough to that outlet for it to work. For example, if I move this outlet from the growing area where the mycorrhizal fungi is to an area that has nothing green in there, and I try to 
plug into that area with a living plant, I'm running a huge risk that even this short distance that the mycorrhizal fungi isn't there. Now, you have to be careful where you plant, so it's always better to plant into the green area. Remember, only mycorrhizal fungi can stay alive on a living perennial root. It needs that to stay alive over the winter so it's there to be able to plug in instantly when you plant your next crop next year. So how do you plant into these rows? There's two methods that are very simple and easy to do. So, the front of our row is going to be facing east, or is where the sun comes in in the morning. In this part of the row here, we don't want to plant in the back, we want to plant in the front. So we have this row here, and we're going to leave this all green, and that's going to be our perennial crop from year after year. We don't have to ever replant any of this. So one of the methods about planting seeds directly into the ground, you want an area that can get warmed up by the sun, so you need a decent area. So, what you do, is you're just going to lay a 2x4 or something else that you can see about three days prior to planting your seed. Now that will uh, stop the sunlight from uh, hitting the plants and they will turn brown but it will not kill off the root. It will just uh, let slightly knock back the plant a little bit and it can regrow but then you can go back in there and just cut a small little trench and plant your seeds into it. Remember, you want all those other roots there. You don't want to break them up. It's, it's not going to hurt it. There's no uh, problem of it being that close together, nothing else too. Roots are better to have in your soil than nothing. And the other method is simple. You're going to take your hand and move the soil out of the way. And if you have a potted plant, it just goes directly into the hole. Now here's a perfect example. Here's the front of the row facing east and we have a volunteer squash plant. These are from some seeds that were left over from uh, a squash I didn't pick up and it had decayed and has regerminated from those seeds from that uh, leftover piece of squash that was in the ground and you can see it's just doing very nicely in the front row and this will do exactly the same next year when you plant your seeds directly in the ground or use a potted plant. So let's think ahead. Let's move forward to next spring. Now, we come out here next spring when we're going to start planting. And easy, if you want to plant garlic, onions, you just make a simple little hole in the ground and place it in there. If your uh, cover crop or your green grass isn't green, it still doesn't matter. The mycorrhizal fungi is still alive because the living root is there. It's a perennial root. Everything I planted is a perennial root and will harbor that mycorrhizal fungi and keep it alive, ready for you to plant your plants in there and accept it and then plug into it immediately. So the benefits, we don't have to till. We don't have to do anything except plant our plants. That's it. There's no extra fertilizer that's needed or nothing else either. The clover, the legumes, is going to supply enough nitrogen to any type of plants you grow in there. Because it had all winter long to develop roots, to get that soil food web working again, and making everything available. That mycorrhizal fungi will take the nitrogen from the legume and give it to the plant that's planted in there. You do not have to chop and drop it. The soil food web, if it's working this long, several months over winter, it is going to enhance that so when you plant your plants into it, everything will be fine. And the reason I know that is because when you start building soil, this is my sunflower field. And if you notice, things are very nice. And it's doing extremely well. Now, I don't use any type of fertilizer on my farm. I don't use chicken manure. I don't use cow. I don't buy any products that have nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium in it. This is all from the soil being alive, exchanging nutrients through mycorrhizal fungi. There is absolutely no need to buy any soil amendments of any kind. It's all there in your soil. And if you can see, 
everything like I says is just amazing now I even didn't grow a legume up there to help or clover to help those sunflowers grow and they're beautiful they're nice and dark green and else too because I did my own soil test and I two things I saw that the soil food web was alive underneath the microscope and also did a small nitrogen test but different than what you can buy in a store there's a uh, more advanced one that can go towards the soil food web one it's not really available on the market yet there's only selected people that have it and I received it as a trial and it told me that I was way sufficient above nitrogen more than I can possibly imagine and then when I can just plant into it and that takes the nitrogen out of the soil but those plants especially the winter rye up there will be holding the nitrogen over winter so I'm not going to lose that that's another benefit of all this green cover that you have down here that winter rye that you're planting will scavenge nitrogen and bring it over to the following year plus your legumes will give it nitrogen so you have all the nitrogen you need by doing this ahead of time so this past august in zone 6b now i'm sure zone 6b is very large and some people um, might have felt the heat more than before but where i am it was the hottest August on record since the early 1800s and we had no rain for five weeks and with the sunflowers I just showed you up on the hill they received no rain for five weeks so how did they survive and this is a question I'm always asked with all this green cover that's here and I plant into it Mark why is that not stealing all that water away from the other plant? Why don't I want just one plant there with a single root system just in an area that is mulched and basically if I have more green area growing, isn't that going to take more water out? The answer is very simple. No, it's not going to because the plants are smart. With that mycorrhizal fungi, they are sharing all that water. With all the roots in the ground, when it rains, it's more water going into the ground. Think of this, every single root that's there is putting more water in than it is taking out. So if you get an inch of rain, that whole inch of rain is going to go in the soil instead of rolling off the top surface. If you have mulch there, it's still going to go off. How is it going to go in the ground if you don't have the pore spaces or openings in there? Yes, worms are a great factor and they're doing so much for the soil. And that's what the wood chip area is. That's our worm heaven. That is also, and they're going, and they do a tremendous job and the benefits of having worms in your soil is surpassed it's 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 off the chart there's so many things I, I really should do another video on all the information that uh, that I've been receiving about worms and how they do a fantastic job in the soil but for them to get here and to work on your soil they want all this they want a nice area to do and then they will multiply and then you can get six worms per shovel full when you dig it up and you'll see how healthy your soil is so what you're doing you're enhancing it to get those worms to come here and to flourish with everything that's there already also perennial roots want to survive it's inbred in their system they're going to reduce the amount of intake based on what's left in the soil and they are going to be drought resistant your alfalfa your winter rye your clovers are all pretty much drought resistant especially your alfalfa alfalfa roots go down four feet so if that root is going down four feet into the ground and also your annual rye grass that's locked in with the mycorrhizal fungi and is going to bring up water and nutrients from four feet deep to feed your plants at the top the shallow root systems like your clovers and also your uh, maybe your squash or your tomato plant whatever it is it's going to all share it's for the best they're all working for the health of the soil they're always putting 51% uh, back. They are not taking more out of the soil. They're not running out of nutrients. They're recycling nutrients. 
So here's some comfrey that I planted with just a little uh, root shaving and it's up already and you can see it's only about three weeks old and if I plant the plant over here it's going to benefit from all that mycorrhizal fungi plus tap into that comfrey root that will go down uh, about four feet or more and spread out and will mind all those nutrients and share that with the plant next to it. So a lot of you are thinking, wait a minute, back to Eden Garden, we're just supposed to put wood chips down. Uh, you're putting rows in now that are flush, raised beds. You're growing a cover crop in there or perennial roots as hybrid mycorrhizal fungi. And in the Back to Eden film or what Paul's doing, he's not doing this at all and it's working. He's just doing a different delivery method and I'll explain that. So this is how Paul achieves keeping the mycorrhizal fungi alive in his ground. As you know, he has a lovely orchard. So uh, in front of us right now, we have a peach tree. And that peach tree is on this list here. And that uses endomycorrhizal fungi. Now what he does is, now his peach trees are more mature and have larger root systems but he taps into that root system on the bottom with all that mycorrhizal fungi that's there all the time. There's no tilling, there's no disturbing of his soil. As you know, he layers things. So that mycorrhizal fungi is alive with that enormous root system underneath. That's how he's achieving it. He has all these large tree roots in the ground and there's even an example that one is like 30 feet long away from another tree so off branching on those roots is that mycorrhizal fungi so he can plant directly into his ground and benefit from the mycorrhizal fungi automatically. So I brought a sunflower over from the field and I want to show you the root system on the sunflower. We're going to make the believe the root system on the sunflower is that of the peach tree and I want to show you how close you have to get for that mycorrhizal fungi to work. So, now we have our sunflower root, which we're going to make believe is our peach tree. Now, again, Paul has these enormous roots underneath the ground. But when you start growing things in your garden, it takes a while to build up that large root system and spreading that mycorrhizal fungi. So, where the outlet is now and the plug over here, let's say that's our plant. It's not going to be able to plug into that plant because it's too far away. It's okay to get that close to it. It's not going to hurt anything or stunt the growth of your plant whatsoever. If anything, it's going to enhance it because it will share water and it will share nutrients. I wish to thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. And I hope uh, I relate something of very interesting to you. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. And we'll get another video out to you as soon as the uh, weather clears again and things are starting to grow. Thanks.